Thank you very much for coming, if we're good to start. Shall I just start with a quick prayer? Would anyone like to open the meeting with prayer? Anyone want to volunteer? Was that you putting your hand up me, or were you just scratching the... I'm just scratching you, let me write a second guess. Second guess, okay. Uh, maybe Ros or Steve, would you open us with prayer, please? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. Uh, pray that we've come with, uh, with listening ears and it, an expectant uh, about what, what we're going to hear this evening from Ian and Roland. And, uh, it's exciting to learn of their plans and all that's going on in this project in Zambia. Just, uh, just be with us as, as we... Um, well, as as we travel to Zambia and uh, as, as we uh, as we hear and see all, all that they uh, that they've achieved so far, but but uh, but they hope to do as well in in the future. Just just bless this evening to in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, my role is to act like Michael Parkinson and interview the man. That's the idea. I am Parky. He's the celeb, if that makes sense. Um, uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, it's a bit cheeky for me to say, do you know who they are? Because a couple of them are named, don't they, Jeff? Yeah, they're all the Kinnaman, so they're all great. Did you know him personally, Jeff? No. Two years on the screen. Two years on the screen. But he has a statue in Kidderminster. He does. And that's the town in which I grew up. Oh, wow. So, deep in Catherine's history. <laughs> Do, um, uh, Etha Summerhill, who, um, that's a, a character of Etha Summerhill, uh, that, that is Hannah May on the end. Do, do you know who they are? They are real pioneers of Christianity. They're real pioneers. They worked out that the transformation of society came through education in England and they established Sunday schools. They're the people who worked out that educating people could make all the difference to what they were. And although we have, let's go to Sunday school and teach about Jesus, they had, the only day they had free was Sunday, children, Therefore, they learnt to read and write. They used the Bible as their textbook. Transformed our society, without a doubt. Real heroes. In uh, 1831, and I'm reading from notes, 1831, 1.2 million children were in the education system. 1.2 million. Uh, the reason I put that slide up is because grappling with understanding what Roland's getting into with this project, he's doing the equivalent of that in Zambia. He's working on changing the entire bottom half of Zambia and the surrounding countries with um, a, a slightly different model. It's a private university. That we don't understand what that means here. Over there it means it's not part of the establishment system, but Roland and his team are going to run the university like a not-for-profit thing to help people who need educating. I guess that's what they did, really, the same thing, and that's why I wanted to put that up. Give us some headlines. Sunday schools, only Roland will be working every day of the week, not just Sundays. <laughs> Is that fair, Roland? Probably. Yeah. Um, I might as well tell you, the title of the project is the Royal Makuni University College. Roland will explain why it's called that. And uh, the very important thing to say to you is that we'll take a break halfway through. A decent coffees will be available. And biscuits. Mel, did you buy some biscuits? Excellent. <laughs> say again? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, the boiler's on, yeah. And I, I particularly want to thank Pete who, yes. you know, came in and set everything up for us and did all that and it gave me a, a, a point to put the slides into which I did about 10 minutes ago and uh, the system said you need three hours so he's even sorted that out so thank you Pete right first question then Roland Royal Makuni University Hospital how did this all start for you <clears throat> well it's uh, quite interesting I, I had a very similar question recently when I was at uh, Hollybush uh, Jonathan was leading the meeting, it was the missions evening, and he asked uh, about five, six of us 
uh, if we could just go up and say, how did you start whatever work you're involved in? And um, uh, it got me thinking, really, because I think, I think a lot of people have this idea that you're kind of called to something, and you, 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 know, you, you seek God, and, and God makes it clear, and that's what you go for. Well, I just happened to trip into this completely by accident, quite honestly. I just want to tell you why that was. Uh, so I was, uh, in the good old days, I used to be travelling uh, with Jeff and Pauline to places like uh, India and Nepal. And uh, we would go two or sometimes, I think twice a year we would go regularly, wouldn't we? Uh, and we'd, we'd cram in a lot there. Uh, and life was very busy, and that, that was fine. Um, and then uh, there was a, a, a time when um, there was a new guy that turned up at work. His name was Triwell Kalyata. And he's a Zambian guy, uh, born again, spiritual Christian. Um, and it didn't take as long for us to connect. Um, and he heard about all these wonderful trips that I was doing <laughs> To India and Nepal and he said would you like to come with me when I go back to Zambia one time it'd be, it'd be nice to take you along you see and I'm thinking yeah I said well yeah yeah well we'll see what happens and uh, he, he kept asking me and I kept saying oh yeah I think I can do your October trip I think so yeah 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 but I couldn't because it was India time for India it was other things happening in the church uh, where we were and um, and uh, so I kind of put him off. And then he eventually just said to me, he said, he said look, Roland, in fact, I, he, he still calls me Pastor, Pastor Roland, Pastor, Pastor. So I just, he just says, well, Pastor, can, can I ask you, can I give you 12 months notice? And will, will you come with me in October 2014? Right? And I said, okay, I will. I said, oh, provided you understand, this is for me, it is once a lifetime visit to Africa and I'll come with you for three weeks to Zambia and that's it and he said okay 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 I'm not sure if he I, knew I know exactly. why you're laughing I know why you're laughing because it's typical isn't it <laughs> and and I don't know if he, knew, if he knew anything of what was happening but, but quite clearly he was as surprised as I was with the outcome so um, the significance of this the significance of this is that um, October, 24th of October, 2014, was the uh, cel uh, Jubilee celebration of independence, uh, 24th of October, 1964. For Zambia. For Zambia. For Zambia. Okay. Um, so we kind of landed. We'd gone to open a very small uh, university college in the um, in Luantia, I think it is, in uh, the Copper Belt, and um, so we got we got paraded around the various officials of uh, uh, Endola, uh, I think it was, and, and other places like that, and we were we were received and we were able to pray with the chief of police and the senior people at the board of education there and and the what likes, and, and that was all good. And we went to this uh, groundbreaking ceremony, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, and then we then moved, this was further up um, in, the, in the Copper Belt. And then we moved um, to the actual day of the Jubilee celebrations. And that was absolutely magnificent. It was really a, a splendid time to be in that country. And um, I, I think I just picked up that actually... You know, God is doing and was doing something quite special at that time in that country. And um, uh, yes, so, so we did that. We went to the celebration things. And then we traveled down from Copper Belt to um, Lusaka. We've got some things to do in Lusaka. We weren't staying very long in Lusaka, but we were there. And, and really, we're just t talking about things and reflecting on my visits to India. And, and one of the big kind of um, frustrations is that, that you, you, no foreign national can own a business or be a director of the companies in, in India. It was just this closed door, you know. And um, 
Yes, so, so I was just look, kind of saying, you know, it's quite difficult to get anything started. And he said, well, he said, he says, oh, this, it's an open door for us. And I said, what do you mean it's open door? He says, well, if you want to, if you wanted to do some projects, it's easy. You just, you just register and set up a company and, and you do that. And I said, well, how easy is it then? He says, well, he said, I've got a friend. Uh, I'll phone ahead and uh, we can, can meet. Just pause him. you. You'll hear Triwell has a friend all the time. Oh, yes. He is so well connected. Yeah. Really, you'll, no, you'll, he is, he is. you'll hear this uh, a he, lot. He, he, this is one yeah. of them. So, it, so he said, um, I said, well, um, I'll speak to my friend and he'll meet us and he, he can explain how to do things, you see. So we, we landed into... Um, uh, yes? Lusaka, thank you. Gone down to... No, 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 I'm at Lusaka now. Lusaka, yeah. So we stopped up in Lusaka and we met his friend, who just so happened to be one of the senior officials at PACRA, which is the same as Company's House in the UK, right? So he just, he just took his, right, what do, you want the, what do you want the company called? And we've been talking a bit about it, you see, and so we're, well, um, um, uh, we'll call it uh, Anglo Zambia Development Limited. Right, okay. And talked about the share capital, so we, we sorted out the share capital. And then um, he said, so what, uh, what are your main areas of activity? So Drywell just said, oh, well, we might as well have several of these. So we'll have um, a, uh, we'll have an education division, schools and, and colleges, universities. And yeah, okay, we'll have, we'll have one of those. And uh, he said, we'll have a, another one to do with agriculture. Uh, he, okay, then we'll do agriculture, yeah. And then we'll have construction. The things to do with construction. So, okay, okay, oh, we're, we're building things, are we? Yeah, we'll build some things, okay, okay. Um, and then another one, I, I forget what it was, mining. <laughs> There's lots of precious minerals around Zambia. So he just said, oh, we'll put mining in, you know. Okay, that's okay. And two hours later... We've got a company with a company seal uh, registered on the, on the register of companies um, in mine and travel's name. And I was just absolutely shocked. I mean, we're on our way, actually we're on our way to Livingston because at the end we've got a week of, of tour, touristy stuff. So I was really looking forward to it, but we stopped off and this happened. And, and this it, is, by the way, you're only going once. I'm only you're going once. Legal yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm only companies. going once. I don't know. Yeah, it just happened. It was easy to do. Wasn't that expensive, so we did it. Um, we still got that company, um, and um, uh, uh, and then we moved down to um, Livingston on the outskirts of Livingston. Um, Sorry, that's the sort of bottom edge, isn't it? As you yeah, get yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, right, right the on other, the southern. Southern, yeah, and all the other African countries like Botswana and others are around the hook yes, at the bottom. Libya, if you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they are. They, they link in there, and um, so where we are is, is not actually that far from Victoria Falls, and the other side of Victoria Falls is Zimbabwe, of course. Um, so, so we were just doing our touristy bits, and every day we went out. We would just so happen to meet somebody, completely strange, who knew somebody who could help us to get something started. So we, we ended up with going to see uh, the Chief Makuni, Chief Makuni, one of the paramount chiefs in, in, in Zambia, uh, was out, out of the country, but he was coming back um, a bit later on in that week before we were set out. But his prime minister, grand title, but the senior uh, kind of, I suppose you call them civil servant type person, uh, was there and he met us and he talked to us a bit and he explained that the chief was coming in and uh, when are we flying out? Well, flying out, you know, the day after tomorrow, we'll be setting off in the afternoon, right, okay. So uh, he, he said, uh, I'll send word. So we were eventually summoned to go the following morning at at eight o'clock or half past eight to the palace, which sounds grand, and it is, uh, but it's very, very much a Zambian style building. Grand, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, we went in and saw him, and uh, we're just talking to him, and we just happened to talk about uh, just a couple of kind of projects that were on our mind that we wanted to do. 
And he just said, oh, that's really interesting. And then he produced, at the end of our discussion, he produced a booklet which was 20, 2012 to 2017, five-year kind of pro, uh, development program. And the, the two things that we mentioned to him were key things that he was wanting to see in that area that he was responsible for, which is a huge area. And uh, it was just unbelievable how things happened. So he then said, oh, um, come with me and I'll show you some land. So he took us and uh, he, he showed us a piece of land, well, quite a large piece of land. And then he said, um, but he said just keep that in mind. Uh, that was near a main road type of thing. But we went further in, inland uh, into the jungle kind of area. Uh, and then he started showing us another piece of land, which was, at that stage, about 60 hectares, which is about 30, 35. 150, 150 acres. So, so 150 acres is something like 75 football fields in, in size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I've been thinking, oh my goodness, what's... What was he talking about? He wants, he wants us to have the land. And I'm saying, we haven't got any money, Tribal. We haven't got any money. People were coming in. People were coming in with, with the Chinese were coming in with suitcases full of American dollars. The Americans were in there. There were some, some Greek uh, investors in there. Um, and and, and we're saying, I was saying, well, we haven't got anything. Said, just listen to what he says. So we were just talking about one of the projects that we could do, which was an a, a Christ, a international Christian secondary school boarding student, for boarding students. And um, so he, he, said, he, said, all, he said, all I want for this, uh, he said, is can, you, can we have two fully funded, um, what's the word, um, scholarships for the best, the best performing boy and girl in, in the area? The area. They go free. And we said, yeah, we, we, we feel we could do that. Um, on, on the basis of that then, we got that huge piece of land. The next time we went back, he said, oh, I'm glad to see you. I've been thinking. He said, um, he said, I don't think you've got enough land for what you're wanting. So he says, I've got another piece of land that's the same size, which was actually slightly bigger, actually. Um, it's a couple of miles away, but he said that can, you can develop that into kind of a sports area and everything else. And I said to travel, even with sports facilities and a swimming pool and everything else, we wouldn't use a quarter of the first plot. But he was insistent, so we have got both plots. Um, the, the other plot was, was slightly reduced because there was somebody else who was interested and the, the chief wanted to keep them on board. Um, so that's the main site that we are con currently concentrating on. All right, it's actually 40. I think it's 46, 46 hectares. So uh, I want to summarise this before we move on to the next question. Um, it, in case people don't understand how this works, the royal sort of tribal system is still there in the land. The nearest thing we could say here is like development mayors that look after an area. They have certain areas of land that they can use for this, and they allocate that to people they think are the right people. So um, Chief McCooney had seen something in you, I think. Um, and and he said that yeah. to me when I met him, that, you know, that there's something in you for this, this land. Mm. So mm. that's the background to it, then. It is, it is. Next question. Can. Trywell, tell me a bit more about your relationship with Trywell, um, uh, if that's OK. Oh, I did want one thing. I just want to say, we all know this. Um, God just gives you a little bit to start with and the rest sort of comes from nowhere and you wonder what happened, don't you? You said when we were chatting this through, if you would write uh, this story in a book, you would call it Ambushed by God. Yeah, that's the, book, that's the name of the book. Ambushed by God. And, you know, write the book. We will, no? probably. We'll have yes, to. Yes, Jeff. I'm following your Together. example. <laughs> give, me, give me 50 years. I'll finish it. <laughs> I'm going to get it printed. I know. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, just, just to say on that, I, I think the other thing that I said, particularly at Olly Bush, that isn't it strange that, that looking back now, if I knew a tenth, a tenth of what I now knew, I would not have come. I would not have gone there. It would have been just too, too much. And yet, you know, it's just, I feel like 
I, I feel like quite gullible with God because, because I kind of go along and say, oh, this is nice. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then something else opens up and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it seems like, well, how did we get here? But that's a different story anyway. Yeah. Try well. Try well. Try well. Try well. Very interesting. Tell me more about your relationship. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a very quiet, unassuming person. Um, and uh, it, it's taken me quite a long time to actually understand how influential he is in the country, quite honestly. Um, and um, he's got contacts all over the place. Um, one of the things was that we need to do a set up a bank account. He said, well, uh, oh, one of my good friends in the CU, uh, he went to Copperbelt um, University, uh, Copperstone in Copperbelt. And he said, uh, one of my best friends, uh, she was one of the leaders in the CU as well as he was. Um, she's now uh, the national director. At that time, she was the national director for Barclays Bank in Zambia. So we went, we went to her office. You know, uh, she wasn't in, but another of his friends was one of the other senior managers there. So we met with him. Uh, but basically, he just said, any Barclays Bank, wherever in Zambia, you'll get your account. And it's like, okay, fair enough. So, uh, can I mention something? So I was on a trip, and when we were there in the hotel, pretty much every night, someone would come and sit down and have a chat to us. Just turn up and, you know, would you like a drink? And I'd occasionally see a couple of people standing at the back and they'd be, ch be chatting, try well, how you do. So who's this? Oh, it's the Joint Chief of Staff of the Army. He's come to see Trywell. And there, there is bodyguards. And that happened all the time. And I don't quite know the full story, but Trywell left the country during one of the uh, moves to a different uh, prime minister. And the new prime minister that came in a year and a half ago, about HH, he's known as sort of is definitely, you know, up for try while coming back and doing some of the things he used mm. to do, mm. if that makes sense. So I was, it's quite unassuming that we get to the airport, there's a VIP treatment for us, wherever we go, there's people turn up to talk to us, and every night in the hotel there is, honestly, the great and good of the sort of leadership of the country coming out to say hello, and so what a door, what it an is, open it door. Is, anyway. It is, it is. Um, I was just going to say, we, we went to see the then Ministry of Lands, which was his auntie. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. His auntie. His auntie. Oh, let me just translate auntie. that for the Southerners. Auntie. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Um, and the current Speaker of their Parliament is a very good friend of his mother's from the West, 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 uh, Zambia. Um, yes, so it's just, it's just, it's got loads of connections. Um, and um, he's very unassuming and uh, I, I think the interesting thing is um, I think sometimes he's as shocked as I am um, <laughs> at these things that happen and he would say to me he said you know Run, I, I've been coming back here ever since I've been across in the UK I've been back you know backwards and forwards over the last 10 years and, and nothing's happened the moment you go with me, it all happens. I said, but you've got, these are your friends, these are your contact. He said, yes, they are, and we are good friends. But actually, the opportunity, uh, or the, yeah, the, the opportunity of these things happening are suddenly happening. And I said, well, don't blame me. Sorry. I said, don't blame me, because I said, uh, it's absolutely nothing to do with me. If, if it's nothing to do with you, then I, I can, my only conclusion is it's, it's all to do with God. So don't, don't blame me for stuff. It's, it's um, and, and, yeah, he's, 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 he's fiercely independent. He takes on an awful lot of the, the pressure and the workload. Um, and sometimes he doesn't want to bother me with stuff. Um, so I, I then eventually find out that something happens. And uh, I, I said, well, I didn't ask me then. He said, I didn't want to trouble you. I said, yeah, but we've got trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I always used to, I used to tell him, and that, now he tells me now, is, is that, try well, we've got one attempt at this, and then we have to live with the consequences. Yeah? 
So, so that's it. Um, he, I've been, is is a very interesting background. He's from a Pentecostal, spiritual background. Uh, then he he ended up in came came to this country. I think I think on coming to this country, I think he he, he joined the, the Catholics. Uh, I think he primarily did that because of the uh, Catholic education for the Catholic pupils, um, and uh, both his uh, daughter and his son have done extremely well. His son has actually uh, now got a scholarship to play uh, American football. American football at a university in, um, in, in the States. In Boston, it's in Boston. Is it Boston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boston, one of the big uh, universities there. So he's got a scholarship to do that. Um, and uh, it, it was really interesting because uh, each evening they had family prayers. I'm from a Catholic background originally, so uh, I wasn't entirely surprised. But he starts off praying, you see, and of course they do the sign of the cross, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. And then he prayed, and then his wife prayed, and then he went round the room, so I prayed, and then his daughter prayed, his son prayed, and then uh, travel finished off, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen, and that was it, you see. But what, what struck me was that particularly the, his, his son and daughter, which was quite young at that stage, uh, it, what surprised me was what they were praying for. And it, it just weren't kind of ordinary things, it was, you know, to praying for, you know, the kind of stuff that we've been talking about um, as we've been out to Zambia and, and the praying, they were praying for me, the praying for openings, the praying for, for God to, 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 to come in his power and stuff like that. And it was really, really quite um, humbling, really, uh, just that, that level. Um, so his wife is a um, staff nurse. Uh, across at Northern General Hospital um, and um, Tribal was in the finance department and he would, it would at that stage we were at a, an initiative of uh, the kind of uh, encouraging staff groups to go out in departments at lunchtime to go for a walk some exercise or something during the summer uh, so we, we would every I think it was every Wednesday we would go a big, big group of us about 15 or so of us would go for a walk and, and, and the joy was that Trouble would always be able to tell us a story about his childhood, of being sent out with his brothers to round up the cows. <laughs> you know, and things like that. And, and just his background and the way that I think uh, he probably got, um, at the expense of some of his older brothers, he got a good education. Yeah. Um, he couldn't afford to send everybody, but... but that the family kind of pulled together and, and he got a good education. Um, can we, I will remove us on if it's okay. Yeah. Time, that's okay. Mm -hmm. to, um, loads of stories from trial that are very funny, but I, I want to actually get to the Royal Macuni University College and that building. Mm. So is that okay we move on? Yeah, Just yeah, yeah, the yeah. times. So um, in the middle of nowhere, at the bottom end of Zambia, um, you know, you get in a van and you, you go up and down dirt track roads. The, if you're traveling, you're used to them, you know, you need good hips for all this. You suddenly turn a corner, and honestly, in the middle of nowhere is this huge structure, which you're going to see some pictures of soon. Um, a hundred seater auditorium, two of them, literally in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I, I went with them to see it, and um, as we turned the corner to see this, my honest, my honest uh, reaction was, this is like Noah building an ark in the middle of nowhere. And I turned to you and said, where did this funding come from to do this? Do you remember? I was like, uh, and we must, I want you to appreciate how big the project is. It's just an, an enormous project with connections everywhere. So we want to talk about the building, because you, you started doing that building. Uh, and, you know, hmm? I've got to ask, how did you fund it? Okay, well... First of all, it, it sits on 10 hectares of the land that we've got, which is allocated for that. And um, uh, try well, with land comes an expectation that you, you know, investors develop in it, develop it, and you set things up, and, and that benefits the local economy and, and the national economy. Um, so there was some pressure eventually when we got the proper title, full title through for the land. 
there's some pressure to uh, develop it. And uh, Trywell said, well, I've always, and I've been involved in setting up small kind of university colleges <coughs> uh, in Zambia, but I'd like to do that on, on this land, you see. And I said, okay then, I'd like to do that as well. Nothing else to do. So I said, oh, I'll join you, you see. Um, so he, he drew some plans up, and he was sharing them with me, and I said, well, okay, you've got two, two lecture halls and a central admin area. So how many can you get in that, in each of the lecture halls? He says, oh, about a about hundred, comfortably a hundred. And I said, okay. Now, what's, what's, the, what's the, you know, interest going to be from the start? And he said, well, thousands. Thousands, right, okay, okay. I said, so, if you're going to build something, what about doubling the size? And he's like, what? Doubling the size? So we ended up doubling the size of everything. <laughs> so we ended up with, with two large lecture halls, which could seat 200 each, mm. comfortably. Um, I think you mentioned that on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was true. Uh, since then, of course, um, as is usually the case of building things out there, you don't think about building regulations or requirements until actually you've, you've built it. <laughs> so when the higher education people came in and said, this is all very good and very impressive, but you need a library, you need an um, a ICT area, uh, and you need um, another area for, for something, you see. So what we've done is we've, we've one of the large buildings, one of the large um, lecture rooms, we've divided into three to give us a uh, library, uh, ICT information. Well, we're going to see a video, so let's yeah, use okay. the video for that, if yeah, that's okay. 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 My question, funding. Okay. During, so, during so, COVID, when no one could yeah, travel, yeah, yeah. okay? Right, so we were stuck. We couldn't go out, it was COVID. So Travel decided, well, we'll just get a small team of six builders and labourers and uh, we'll just set them off. And each month, we'll just, we'll just pay for you know, the materials that they need. And, and so during, during the lockdown, we built the building, basically. A lot of the building went up. And it was great for them because they were out in open air, they were spaced out, um, and there was no trouble with, with COVID for them. And they absolutely loved it. Where everybody else was not doing anything, we, we would start building. Um, and uh, so that really worked out. So it was literally from month to month, what can we afford, what's the next thing to do? And that's how uh, we did it. I had a personal income. By the, by the way, if you fancy at any point doing a building project where you might need to build anything, get that team in <laughs> to do it, you know, and, and pay it out of your pensions. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so we want to watch a video then. Let's yeah. watch the video now. Pete, can you start the, the main video for us, please? You're going to see videos of the building. I want to just say this before it comes on. This was built before they knew whether they could get water or electricity to it. Yeah. Now, it's on a plain that's by the Zambezi River, so there's going to be water somewhere, but you're going to pay an awful lot of money to find it with big drills and everything. Um, and, you know, that's there and, you know, no, no water yet when I was... Anyway, yeah. did you show the video, Pete? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First yeah. One. Thanks for coming tonight. coming tonight to hear Roland's story. Here are some videos that Ian and Roland will talk about. Are you ready? That's that's on Say our again? land. That's 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 the reception area for the for the area for our land because we've got a number of chalets that we've built, uh, and there's a bit of a swimming pool, 
and there's a, a, a kind of a restaurant dining area that, that has been developed since. Um, so if you fancy a holiday in Zambia, in a chalet with a reception and a swimming pool. Oh, no. Oh. Eventually, yes, we, we have set it up. Yeah, 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 Let's yeah. get to this quickly then. So what's going on here? Uh, that's the uh, well that's been dug. We, 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 we did this after we built all the buildings. And we used to get the local fire brigade to come in and bring us water every day. Yeah? Um, and this is the drilling that was successful. And, and it, it is quite emotional because that's on the school site. But on our private land, I think we've had two previous attempts and it's not, it's not worked. And, it's ex uh, and you pay, and, and, you pay, and, uh, you pay every time they go down, and you pay every time they go further down, and you're wondering whether you've got enough money in the account, and all that's going on. Now, this is on our, pri is this on our private land. Yeah, yeah. I think it is. I think, I think so. this is our private land. So this is, unfortunately, we are in the dry season now, um, and, and the, all, the whole area is in drought. Um, it's not just our well, but the entire area is in drought, which is causing a problem. Um, Yes, but but. Ah, we should, why do you drive? No, we don't. We don't. Uh, why do you drill? Oh, that's dry well. That's dry well. <laughs> the best time to drill is in the dry season because yeah. if you get water in the dry season, you get it in the wet season. Yeah. The water table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's really like striking gold. It is. Oil. It's really like that when you do it. It is. It is. It really okay, is. Okay, this is now more on the building that you uh, This is the one. I think Trywell sent this over last week, didn't he? Yeah, library. This is the library area. He's got, I don't know, many thousands of books to, to put in there. Um, I think further down uh, there, you've got uh, an area that, that will be for computers, uh, for computers uh, in that section as well. Um, so, yes. So we've been told that with the modifications we've made, we, we're going to. There's no problem about getting the approval for the building side of things. So uh, that's. The, I mean, there's also approval for the actual university college as well through the higher education system. We've already got those approvals. There's a sign off of the building. Yeah. The, new, the roof needed replacing because it wasn't done quite right. That's, an that's extra right. Cost. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, and, and that's the kind of area that we're in. Um, these are the toilet blocks, uh, just at the back there, um, and uh, that must be that must be the um, ICT the area. ICT, computers. Yeah. We need to get some computers in there. So. Uh, Do you remember Graham a few weeks ago said we got this little building and we want some? This is the same thing, only bigger, it's much bigger. much bigger. Yeah, it's yeah. such a grand. I project, think, yeah, it? a lot of people when they come, and particularly people from the local district that we're in, Kazangula Council, when they come and they saw it, they were just like amazed. It just, it's just huge. Um, uh, so that's that's the inside. Yeah, um, a lot of work gone into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, pardon? The, the college. Can you pause U the university? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> um, it, it, it's uh, no, it's, it's a private thing, but the, the, the government will put money in. So we've got it's, why, why it's called the university colleges as well as the academic programs we're running. We're, good, we're running a number of vocational programs, things like building skills, those building trades. Uh, uh, car mechanics we're doing, computer maintenance repairs, and we're going to set up a leather craft hub uh, on, on the site as well. Uh, all that comes with fund various funding, either from the government or the leather craft fund uh, comes with funding from the European Development Fund. Um, um, so you, you, you set the building up, you get permission to run a course, you get the funding to run the course, people come on the course. That's right. They don't pay to come on the course so much as the funding covers a lot of that. Not completely correct that no, they don't pay at it all. It depends, but certainly the vocational one, but the academic ones, it, it's like any other. And that's why this is, we've got a model that's really important this. We've got a model, both an operational model 
and a financial model that means that this tertiary, this, this university education is available to rural students. So I, I think something like maybe the top 10% of the country's wealthiest families afford to send their children to university. For the rest, it's just, it's not, it's just impossible. We've got a different system which is going to be primarily um, online learning, blended learning method online with uh, intensive kind of uh, periods of them coming to the site and having a week's worth of lectures and workshops and seminars. Um, and, and that means that they don't, they're not permanently on site, uh, but they are accessing the information through um, online uh, live streaming links and, and videos and things like that. So that's, uh, I suppose it's a bit like, I don't know, open university type of approach, I think. Yeah, we need a new uh, version of open university, which isn't the videos, but you, you, you sign on online, you get these multimodal yeah, yeah, yeah. courses. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask a question? You can. A, a, a lot of them do have things. They do, they, they do have that, but certainly our um, the, the university computer section, uh, we've got uh, access through um, reconditioned uh, and you know. So they've got Wi-Fi where they are. Yes, we've got Wi-Fi. And you didn't mention that when people come on site, the the thing doesn't have a hotel, so all the people will stay in the local area. Yeah and the economy will benefit from all that happening as well. That's part of the idea, really. Um, yeah, yeah. Worth a mention that um, you know, some of the local, uh, we've got the hospital as well there, the medical center, but some of the local uh, places are already starting to build extra rooms so they can- Once, once they this. saw the actual college go up, a lot of them then built an extra extension on their, their houses, primarily for students, to accommodate the students. Uh, and we've, we, we have a big community engagement program. So we did say to them that, you know, we would be using local builders, local skills, local materials as available, providing they were at the right quality and standard. Um, and we've, we've, we've kept to that. Um, so so there, there's been a lot of them that have benefited from that and will continue to benefit from that. Right, we have to uh, pause. There's a coffee, uh, tea. There's a video about to play with lots of pictures on for you to see, and um, this is going to terrify me. At 10 to, we're going to do a live Zoom call with Triwell. Maybe. <laughs> you know, let's pray about that, shall we? <laughs> so, uh, video coming on. Mel Blesser is doing teas and coffees. She might want a bit of help. Yeah, you're going to help. Thank you very much. Um, so the video, you'll need to turn the volume down a little bit, yeah. Pete. So that's going to go on. You can ask Roland any questions while we take this break. The purpose is to time it so the Triwell in Zambia is ready to take a Zoom call at 10 to. And we'll spend about five, ten minutes with Triwell talking. And then afterwards we'll get into a lot more about the courses, what we're doing, some of the other things that are going on there, and you know, how we can help. Is that all right? But let's take a break. And feel free to talk to just, just Robin to say, doing it. These, these are photos going back to 2014. So I've been there this year. I'll be I've been in Zambia for ten years, ten. Um, and and it's a, a cross, across a whole range of things. So um, a few kind of holiday snaps in there as well. But but it gives you a real good flavour of the kind of stuff of the churches we go in and, and things like that. Uh, and, and I'll be referring to those later. Yeah, and, and watch out for him walking with lions. Oh yes, I've got some of those. And pulling them by the tail. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. I was right. with you for that, by the way. I know. Can you put the video on? Um, if you want to ask questions, carry on, but tea and coffees are about to appear. And if all technology works, Roland will talk to Triwell, and Triwell will be on the screen. And if the sound doesn't work very well because of echoes, Roland will run out of the room and carry on the Zoom call. And you'll see Roland, you'll see Triwell, but Roland will run out of the room at that moment. Pardon?
worship you. questions i want to ask you now is um have we seen have you seen anything of the elephants this evening well are you talking about my royal security guards yes <laughs> yes they are just in the vicinity they like coming around um, 6 p.m when it's getting dark so they're just within the vicinity the dog was barking about five minutes ago so they are very close. So they're not uh, gathering around your building? Uh, well, I think they are locking the gate and making sure that the fence is, <laughs> is, is secure. And then around midnight, then they'll be trooping yeah. on <laughs> between the chalets. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, um, it's been a long and a tumultuous journey. Um, but looking back to, from where we started, what are your thoughts now about where we've got to? Thank you, Laura. And, and indeed, uh, looking back from where we started, uh, where we are, uh, to be honest, I uh, just want to say thank you to you Roland and uh, to everyone involved including Estella I never imagined uh, Roland looking back that we ever own uh, such a huge structure and every time I walk around actually I it's very difficult to comprehend that uh, we have set up this um, uh, facility uh, it is a relief, it is overwhelming, but it's something that we give glory to God, knowing that the, the noble vision and purpose and cause uh, for what we intend to do, we'll have this wonderful facility where the service and the ministry will be provided 
uh, to the most disadvantaged in the community. I think it's something that uh, gives me, and I believe Estella, uh, including yourself, Roland, looking at our journey, that despite the suffering, despite the challenges, despite all that we've gone through, even beyond our time, we know that there will be a facility that will save uh, the people. That's great. Great. Yes. So um, in terms of where we are now, we've got this huge building. So um, how do you see the next, what, five, ten years panning out? You know, Pastor, looking back to where we are coming from and what we've gone through, I was hoping you were going to say, try waste your time now to retire. Let others take over for the next five years. <laughs> I'm the first one to retire, as you know. <laughs> well, Pastor, um, what we have is an addition to us as vessels of God's work. We see the facility as um, a vessel as an additional vessel that is going to help us um, facilitate the vision and um, mission that God has placed on our hearts. Uh, just for uh, the sake of our audience, uh, we are set up as um, a social enterprise uh, with a view and hope and desire to deliver tertiary education in the rural outskirts where the majority of young people are unable uh, to access uh, tertiary education um, <clears throat> in the urban areas. And there are so many problems that compound uh, the hindrances uh, for the young people to access tertiary education. Cost is one of them. Uh, lack of government support <clears throat> is another, and also the fact that the majority of the people in the rural outskirts are dependent on agriculture. For those who've been to Zambia in the rural outskirts, you understand that uh, in the absence of any good harvest, it compounds the challenge of supporting their own families. And this year and last year, there's been drought, and a number of people are struggling to even with free education up to second level, are struggling to get their children um, to school. With the coming of this facility, which is um, high quality, but low uh, fees and strategically placed by God's grace in the rural outskirts, it will mean that in the next five years, by God's grace, we'll have a lot of young people uh, being empowered, not only with knowledge, but with the skills and employability capacity for them to go out there and be able to either work for themselves or get a job. But our primary focus is to make sure that we empower the young ones with the ability to stand on their own uh, in order to help the local community um, uh, young generation move out of poverty. In addition to that, Roland, um, you know that the facility itself, by being located in the rural outskirts, is going to be a catalyst for the local economic development. You're talking about transport, you're talking about accommodation, you're talking about food supply. All those who start to kickstart the local economy in a rural outskirts. And we hope that the model will be copied by the government as they look at setting up more institutions across the country. Well, hi, hi, hi Travel, it's Ian. Um, hi, I've yeah. asked Roland if I can do one final question for you as we finish this bit, and it's simply this. What can we pray for? Oh, so many things to pray for, but specifically at this moment, specifically at this moment, as we start to recruit staff, as we start to uh, get 
a different kind of um, needs to enable us to start to operate as a college. We are in need of finances, specifically finances. Um, we know that God will provide resources in different form and shape, but our budget actually is talking more about money. So therefore, <laughs> we are asking for financial help and support to help us go forward. All right, my friend, I'm, uh, I don't know if I'll actually see you, Zambia, this year, but probably next year. You're coming back here. I'm going out in mid-October. So my deep love to you and Estelle. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you and greetings to the church. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Did, I, did, I, did, you, did you all hear that? Do I need to say it again? Yeah, no. You all heard it. Yeah, it, it, I, I think it was uh, Mel suggested we had to make it abundantly clear. That's what's happened so far. So far. So. Um, all right. Um, next question. Oh, I should mention, uh, I'm, before I ask you the question, uh, you met the president of Zambia with, with yes. Trywell. Yes. Yes. Um, I was, I was with you, and I thought I would also meet him, but I had to leave. Uh, dates changed. We were advised to give him something as a present, so and it was Mel's suggestion that we gave him a um, a bottle of uh, of uh, Endo's relish, <laughs> and and a book on how it was created. And um, you know, I, I actually Roland actually gave it him because I'd left the country by then. But we advised him to put it on some cheese toasties. Just saying. Anyway, you met the president. That was part of it as well, wasn't it? Yes. But yes. I do want to move on. University. Uh, does anyone want to ask a question about that before we... Sorry? Endos, yeah. Anderson's rally. Yes. I'd just like to thank my wife because I was thinking, OK, I need to take an iPad, maybe a computer. What? She it, went, Endos rally, she in, and we all went, yes! He, he, the HH, the president, actually studied at Birmingham University president did. Uh, he's also studied in the, the States as well. So um, he, he knows, he's, he's certainly heard about Sheffield. He may have come across Endo's relish. It, it, the interesting thing there was, of course, he couldn't take it straight away. I think it, it had to go to be checked that there was nothing in it other than Anderson's relish. But, but I, one assumes that he eventually got back to it. I have faith that one day I will see him and go, how was the Hendo's? <laughs> We'll see. Anyway, uh, the, the university, the courses, let's just quickly, we are, we are behind time and we did yeah. promise to finish. Quickly, there's three layers of courses involved. There's education, proper educational ones at the university level, there's NVQs, all that. But what courses are being run? Um, we're starting with four programmes. Uh, we're looking at um, construction, trades, uh, forensics, which is a, an academic one. And it's quite wide ranging. It's not just. Um, financial um, forensics, financial accounting or financial records, uh, but this forensics in terms of um, uh, crime scene investigations, there's the, the pathology side of forensics uh, and, and the, um, areas of, of uh, forensics as well, other areas, but we're, we're doing a complete program of that. Um, we're doing uh, a course that is primarily entrepreneurship and we're also doing a, a computer hardware uh, that's one of the vocational ones computer hardware uh, maintenance repair and maintenance course uh, we were advised to start slow well start small uh, get every, all the systems in place for managing students getting the either the, the lecturers or the uh, instructors in place um, and, and just running 
a, a, a small number of courses and then add to them as we go on. So that's what we're doing. Is that all the courses then? Is that that's, all? that's all we're going to start with, yes. But eventually there will be a full range of kind of business, business studies and uh, yes, yeah. the stuff that Ian's doing yeah. uh, as well, which is training um, courses and things like that. And an exciting one with the British Computer Society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and he's, he's also, I think it's also fair to say, he's, he's actually designed some courses specifically for the African market. So uh, yeah. I think... Oh, okay. um, but, yeah. So all these different courses. It's a bit eclectic, all these courses, Roland. I'm guessing these are the courses based on what you've been asked to provide for the economy and for the people. That's why you're doing these particular... Yeah, absolutely. Because we didn't go, oh, we must do this kind of college and university. We went, what's needed? Let's well, do those first. Is that I think that's always been our vision. Uh, the exciting thing of, of talking to the, the president, we had 15 minutes with him. It was just an informal meeting. Myself, Triwell, and the president sat in one of the reception rooms in um, State House in Lusaka. Very splendid. Like, their, their equivalent of Buckingham Palace, I would have thought. It's, it's very uh, opulent and very, very well decorated, of course. Um, but it was really particularly interested. Two things that struck me was, we've, we've done a brochure of the building as it was, so, which looked fairly complete at that stage, 2022. And he, he said to us, he looked at it and looked at it and read the, the little blurb, we made it into a little leaflet thing, you see. So he looked at it and said, he said, oh, very good. He said, when do you start building? We looked at each other and we said, no, 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 that is there. That is there, on the ground. I said, yes, yes, if you go, if you go into, um, um, if you go to see Chief McCooney, uh, it's, it's, it's just, down the, just down, down the road from, from him. So that building is already there, yes, yes, okay. And then he said, oh, he said, uh, I really like the kind of vocational things. We've got to upskill the entire population. We've got to do something with the young people. We've got to provide them with uh, training opportunities and employment opportunities. Uh, he was in fact, I think he was more, more excited about the vocational courses than the academic courses, quite honestly. Mm. Uh, and, and I think picking up from what Trial said, m my vision in this is that um, we want it to be a, a, a center of excellence in terms of, of tuition and learning. Um, and, and we're not prepared to cut corners on that. Um, and, and therefore, uh, again, uh, Trimal's well placed a number of connections of, of senior people in uh, academia that, that are on board with this as well. Um, so it's very exciting. He has a proper board, like you'd expect a board. I misspoke, by the way, when I said Ronald will be the vice chancellor. Ro uh, Trywell will He's be the, the vice executive, chancellor. Yeah, and He's the executive the executive registrar. You're going to be the chief finance officer and oh, the number yes, two. Right. So my error this Correct. weekend. Um, Correct. But there's boards, there's people with, uh, you know, things that you've got to do, resp legal responsibilities to sign for. I've got some to do. I just wanted to ask, you know, this is designed for the rural area. So the qualifications they need to access university, do they have the facilities yes. to be able to do Yes, yes, they've got them, yes. They, they, they've got them. They just can't afford to go to university. Yes. Oh, that's, that's the only thing, or uh, the opportunity to go. Right. And how do we get the funding? Do they have you like we have? He just said that they've been, he said to me, Trywell said, yeah. some of the some of the parents will pay, will want to pay by goats. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, they can come to your place then to drop the goats off. You know, but it is like that. It's just like that, yeah. And, and that's why it's so important, like the drought for two years, even those that are sending them to university can't afford to send them anymore. You know, so... Yeah, the drought and the COVID brought the biggest uh, pandemic there was, which is poverty. Yeah. Uh, that's the real problem that we need to, to get out yeah. of. Uh, Trywell is full of really funny stories. Um, the elephants. Um, there's a herd of drunken elephants going through the village a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Ron said, well, what do you do about that? And he said, if you're rich, you put electric fences up. 
if you're moderately rich, you get a taxi into town and get some fireworks to let off. If you're really poor, you hide under the bed. <laughs> I was under the bed, he said. He was on two nights. For two nights. A couple of nights. Uh, yeah, let's get some golden questions there. Here's the big one, I think. Oh, yeah, go ahead. On one hand, you said, right, and Simon said, right, this is for the poorest in society. Yeah who, if they can afford anything, can't afford very much. On the other hand, we come back to the funding issue, mm -hmm. and you haven't really said whether there's any real sources of funding apart from you, um, which is amazing. So I put the two together, and um, I, they don't end up. I think for the vocational courses, there's lots of, of government training money going into that. Uh, it's a big area. So that will bring in quite a substantial amount of funding, um, and, and I think contracts are well in place, well set up now to do that. Can that read across to the academic side? No, no, I don't think so. No, because I think it's, it's, it's specifically given for training monies for vocational uh, subjects. Uh, the way that we're dealing with it is that we, we don't have full-time lecturers. We're paying lecturers on a programmed activity basis to deliver lectures or to deliver uh, workshops or whatever it's called, uh, seminars and things like that. Um, um, one of his connections is between uh, the Unison in this country, big uh, union that covers, um, uh, that covers university uh, lecturers as well, um, and their equivalent in Zambia that does cover uh, them, and the main guy uh, of that of the union of Zambian lecturers uh, as, as, as uh, given an edict that um, the members need to support this. Um, and um, we have got a number of people that uh, are very well qualified academically to deliver the courses. Uh, and we're just working those appointments out. So, so it, it is a good level of education, but it's not. There's no government funding um, in that, but but it's affordable. If they went to the, one of the big universities in Lusaka, or even uh, uh, if up in the Copper Belt, uh, uh, they would be paying an awful lot more, lots and lots of you know, thousands of pounds effectively uh, each each year, uh, which is not affordable. So they've got the, they've got the right entry qualifications, um, and with the kind of model that we've got, it just makes it, um, it, it just makes it accessible. So uh, it, I don't think, I think he did, Graham, uh, Graham Reed did jokingly say, the, the people that are going through their preschool thing will eventually go to the college. That, 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 that could be a serious thing. Mm -hmm. And um, we are looking at having, because uh, we're right down in the south, but we're looking at having uh, satellites. And one of the places that the we, we want yeah. to explore is very local to where Graham is. If, um, I, if I could make a comment on that as well. Mm -hmm. I think you're completely right that it doesn't add up. Because... Um, we've got a project in Uganda where we started doing a school, the Royal Institute. Uh, it started with just kids of, a, of the pastor. We have 130 kids there now, and it's non-commercial. So, you know, we don't make money out of it, but they go there for that school. And uh, I've never seen it add up. I've just never seen... I've, I've, every time we've... And by the way, I just want to point out, I do not give financially to that project. I'm an advisor on it, so just to, I just want to be really clear. Every time I look at what they're doing, I think this doesn't make any fiscal sense to me at all. And yet it continues to work and invest and grow and get better and better. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, there's, when, God, when God says he pays in the end, but you can't sometimes see where it all comes from, can you? I think is the truth. Um, next question. Commercial or charity? What, what are you doing? It, it, it covered that uh, very eloquently. Um, we're effectively a um, not-for-profit social enterprise. Uh, we are, it's a, a private limited company. I think most of the universities are out there. Um, but um, our, uh, we're not in it, I told him, we're not in it to become rich. I don't think we will become rich at all. But 
uh, whatever money comes in, I'm sure will be uh, reinvested into the facilities and to, to uh, expand the facilities. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, we've, one of the things that we needed to get the money for the training, we needed to build a workshop. So Trowell set off and he's built this workshop, and I forget what the dimension of the workshop is now. It's not that big, but it might, it might accommodate 20 students, right? Uh, but but his, pro, his thing is, okay, over time we will double that, and then we'll probably double it again. So you, you need something to start off, because once you can start operating, that attracts the money, it attracts the students, and, and we've got the qualifications in place. Um, with the um, uh, I could, I could, uh, qualification standards of board out there. Yeah. So that's, that's all there. Um, so we just need to operate. So once we can do that, in a sense, we can open the doors. So we are thinking of recruiting um, and starting enrolment probably uh, at the end of January when I go back out again. Come so back just before Christmas. Yeah. The terms are January and then or June, July. Two terms a year, not three. Yeah, yeah. Two, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's got a structure, plus a governance board, and yeah, you know, yeah. but it's, so it's got a, a commercial and a almost charity arm, which is pretty common. I mean, Nick's Seeker stuff is the same. It's got both, depending on how you use it. And so, um, yeah, I um, hope that helps answer that question. Ten years' time, what's it like for you? Are you living in Zambia? Are you running the finances for a university campus and other places in Zambia? What's it going? And these, by the way, are prepared questions. He does know they're coming. I just want to get to the heart of it for him as a person. What's it in 10 years? It's really difficult to say. All I can say is, uh, this time round, I'm going for still over three months. Um, uh, I told Ian at the time, when I actually booked the ticket, it really hit me. I'm going for three months. Um, and uh, part of that time... Farwell's with me, but he's coming back. Uh, he's got an arrangement. He's, he, I don't know how he does it, but his, his, his boss at, work, at the uh, hospital trust, uh, he's the director of um, HR and resources and all kinds of support services. Um, and uh, Trywell is, is a, a very good business manager and advisor to him. Um, so he's got a two-year career break, but Travel feels the need to come back. We've, we've ha we have faced some financial challenges, and that's depleted his, his resources. So I think we're, we're together for um, a month. He's going to appoint the staff. I will go and meet them, and then he'll hand them over to me, and I'm doing in induction with them. Great fun, isn't it? I've yet to write the induction manual, but we'll find it. We'll find a way through that. But... Um, um, I think, I'm, just, I'm uh, just writing one today for someone I should send you. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but it, it just, then, and then Travel's going to come back, he's going to work for three months, uh, which will give him the financial resources he needs to come back out for the big push. Um, so I'm going to be out there by myself, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this through, oh, it's all right, when Travel's there, because he looks after everything. <laughs> but he's going to show me around and put me in contact with people. It's a big thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and certainly with kind of grandchildren around as well, you know, uh, that's another big pull. I don't know. But, but you know, I, I'll be honest. I think just thinking, you know, God, why didn't you do this when I was 30 or 40? I've got a lot more energy. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd have a different kind of but mindset. Now you're, now you're wiser. Yeah, but I'm a bit slower, a bit, <laughs> not so many brain cells, not, you know, yeah, yeah. I am coming up in February, I will be 65, and uh, I'm feeling it sometimes, you know. Mm. Um, so you're going out, uh, I try well the same, there's this sort of, it's not like the old days where you got on your ship and you went to Japan and missionary 25 years away before you came back. It's a bit different now, there's a lot more of this popping in and out that goes on, isn't there? Um, but as I've seen you express it, your intent, Trywell's intent, is to be out there. Yes. Trywell has come back. He's got a two-year sabbatical from his job with an intention of not going back to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you're going out this trip 
you're coming back for Christmas. I'm coming back. This, we're meeting out there in Zambia. We're going on to Uganda for uh, missionary work, miss, uh, stuff. We're coming back for Christmas sometime in Jan, Feb. You're going again. Oh, yeah. And I mean this as a deep friend. I love you deeply. I hope you stay out there because I think that's what God wants you to do. I think the, the plan is that if I get the kind of uh, investor permit that I've been told is, I should get, that gives me the ability to come and go certainly for the next five years. Oh, well, so I don't have to worry about visas and things like that. Um, Isn't which it? Is, which I mean, that's another, you know, there's another open door. And again, one of his friends is the head of the department that deals with that. Of course he is. So they're just waiting, waiting for me to, to turn up and it'll all, be, all happen. So, and I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll believe that when I see it. Doubting Thomas I am. Unless I see that vermin. So uh, yeah. you, you've said to me, five years, this project, you know, replace yourself with someone else. Yeah. You think you've got another five years of stuff to do, possibly other stuff I in think, Zambia? I think in terms of the, the kind of responsibility that I'll be shouldering now, um, I've already told Trywell that the, 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 key, the, the staff that we are, are appointing are key appointments because I'll be looking for my replacement in the next three years. Okay? And, and, and I, I would sincerely hope I can pass that, that responsibility on to uh, yeah, younger, younger people that can deal with that. Um, I think, uh, I'd like to think, uh, because I've invested so much in it, and I'm committed to seeing it uh, succeed and to grow and develop, I think I'd, I'd, like, to, um, I'd like to be around, but not necessarily having to do a lot of the hard work apart from trying to get tribal to do things. And then <laughs> if I crack that, maybe I'll come back home. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm open. I think, you know, it's just, looking back, it's just so, it's just so fantastic to me. You know, it's un unimaginable. It's, it's beyond what I can think of or imagine or, or even dream about, really, quite honestly. Um, and um, I have to conclude, this is nothing to do with me at all. It's so embarrassing. It's nothing to do with me. It's God's doing it. And I just think, well, if God's doing it, then, then I'm going to do it then, if that's what God wants me yeah. to do. I know what God's doing. Get stuck into it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, dates. Um, a week on Sunday, we're, we're sending you off. Yeah, yeah. Praying yeah, for you at church. Off you go. Um, you're then out in Zambia. Triwell is with you for about a month. Then Triwell comes back. Uh, yes, I go out on the 11th. Fly out on the 11th of September. Yes. Triwell's back. Uh, Merle and I come and join you about a month and a half later. Yeah. We've got some courses in the capital, but then we've got a bit of tourism. Merle is going to walk with Alliance. Aren't you, dear? I, I can assure you, we'll arrange for them to be fed beforehand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going on to Zambia for, sorry, going on to Uganda for yeah. uh, the end season of all the prayer conference and everything. Yeah. Then we're back for Christmas. And then sometime in January and Feb, you'll, January. Be going, yeah, yeah. you'll be going back out again. And yeah. I think that one will be probably for a much longer period. I'd, potentially. I, think. I, 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 want to, I just want to see what my role is. And I've said to try, well, there's no point me being out there twiddling my thumbs. I can do that in Sheffield. You do very well in Sheffield. I do, I do that very well in Sheffield. <laughs> So, um, uh, yes, so if, if I've got a, a meaningful role, then I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah? I mean, I'll be popping back, but not. So wh wh where, where's your funding between now and when the money arrives for the uh, courses that we're doing with Tokos? When, you know, <laughs> this isn't a prepared question. No, it isn't. Just say no, no comments. Uh, okay. Um, How are you funding now until that point? Uh, my current funding is primarily through my NHS pension plus a part-time job that I've got with a video producer in York. Um, God has blessed him with work uh, and I've, that's been the source of, of my employment there as a Christian guy. Um, uh, we're doing work in the third sector on a whole range of kind of social issues. Um, uh, yeah, 
anyway. Um, and your, your aim is to keep that going from... The, the, the aim is to keep that going, and God willing. Uh, we've come to a bit of a, a hiatus in terms of projects coming in, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen this next month, but um, yeah, we, we've got other work that is coming in, so there might be a bit of a timing issue, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. And just to say on that, uh, I've been speaking to uh, Steve Bode, who is chair of Partnership Trust, uh, and uh, he's quite happy for me to be registered with Partnership Trust for personal support. Um, so I'll, I'll get that sorted out with him, which, um, which will be another source of support whilst the other university activities come on board. All right, okay. Um, questions? Without wishing to extend this for another half an hour, because I suspect there's a lot more just underlying the surface. There were some very interesting pictures or, or plans of a clinic up there. Oh, gosh, I've not you even didn't, yeah, about we, that. We, we, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, does anyone mind if we talk about that for five minutes? Does anyone? It was in the list, we, you just didn't... No, I didn't, I, we didn't cover the question. So it's my fault, sorry. Community, yeah. community, community projects. Yeah. We, we've been involved, as well as doing that, we are part of a community. And we're very much part of a community. So... Um, for example, in the drought, uh, where they come, there's a problem to get the milly meal for particularly the elderly, there is a food program, distribution program, and we contribute to that. Um, and I, I've got some photographs uh, of, of that, um, of, of the elderly receiving their milly meal, which is their basic staple diet. Um, and uh, we're involved in all kinds of other things uh, to do with um, uh, the Chief McCooney's uh, main rain ceremony, uh, which is uh, normally um, in July, I think it is. Um, but it sounds like they're going through a, a, a bit of a drought at the moment as well. So, um, uh, but but the, but the biggest one, sorry? the building. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 but the biggest thing is to do with the the Enthongwe is the village that we're in. So we're part of the Enthongwe village. Um, and uh, uh, so we went past it and, and we saw the village and I've got some pictures I don't want to go into a long it's just basically a wooden big glorified wooden shack and it's got um, a room a room veranda on the one side there's a, a room um, small room that's got um, what do you call it a trolley on and that's the labour and delivery room yes so if the two women, one goes on the trolley, the other one goes on the floor, and they fill the room, okay? This is the hospital, by the way. You didn't use the word hospital. It's the local hospital no, or medical centre, isn't it? It's a health, it's just health, a health clinic. Centre, yeah. But they do, and, and uh, I, I forget how many um, deliveries they do a year, but other from the surrounding areas come into that one as well. Um, the, the middle room is, is a, almost like a broom cupboard, and that's paediatrics department. Yeah, and then the other side is a, a normal size room, and that's just um, adult everything. <laughs> um, uh, yes. So, um, from my experience in the NHS and, and being involved in, in building and equipping and then staffing the Jessup Wing, yeah, um, I, I came up with a barking idea. Uh, that, that, that we should have a separate maternity wing, which we will have proper antenatal clinic with facilities. With facilities so that pregnant ladies can actually get into the toilet and use it, rather than filling the toilet up and can't close the doors and things like that. But anyway, um, uh, so, so you did see that. It's a, a quite a unique arrangement at the time. It's a combination of ourselves in partnership with the local council yes. um, and uh, that means access to the district medical director uh, and the district works officer um, and then the other one is the community which is managed through uh, Chief McCooney's palace um, so we've all been given responsibilities for doing things so we're kind of getting in the uh, we've, we've helped draw the plans and got the plans in place. In addition to that, part of the deal is if we help build this um, maternity wing, uh, we'll 
and, and will provide a, a house for staff, clinical staff, will the district medical director please appoint additional mm. staff as well? And he has agreed to do that. So we've got a new house that we're building as well, and we're going to get two additional two members of um, clinical staff, um, nursing and midwif midwifery uh, staff. So uh, we're quite excited about that. There's an antenatal clinic. There's a delivery, uh, delivery and um, uh, postpartum area, and then there's a small four-bedded bay for post postnatal care. Um, yeah, so it's exciting. It's, it's small, but it, it's probably going to be <laughs> small. better than it's small. Probably, it's going to be yeah. It's, well, it's bigger, much bigger than the, the current big, but it is. I think it's going to be better than the actual hospital in Livingston. Yeah, uh, when it's done. I mean, my point about small was that could be a project that you'd be amazed to be involved in, and. and Roland sees it as a small one compared to some of the other things that are coming. And that's part of what I realized was just this, you know? When, when Nick preached on Noah, and Noah, you know, building an ark in the middle of nowhere, my immediate thought was Roland, honestly. I thought, I, the only person I know who's like that, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't dream, sort of. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so, um, so yeah. you'll, you'll see, whether you yeah. like it or not, when we say goodbye to you, you'll get a t-shirt. Be more Noah. Oh, that comes from me. Uh, any other questions? Anything else you want to ask? It's it's something different, this, isn't it? It's very an unusual project for uh, for you. Any any other questions? We'll finish with prayer, a bit of open prayer. But if you've got anything else you want to ask, feel free. Yeah, I'm just trying to uh, read through uh, the comments. Was your first intake of students for the first academic year? Um, it's something like 2015, then, January 2015. I believe we are looking for yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 20, 20, 20, Sorry, 20. I thought you said 25. I apologise. You did? I yeah. 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 That's what wives are for. <laughs> we get it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. Would you like to come out and do woodwork? <laughs> yeah, we're looking for woodwork. Is just to say, when uh, we did have a uh, 2022, February 2022, Ian was with us, we had a stakeholder meeting, we had some of the key professors in the audience, and one of them was very quiet, but at the end he said, he said, if you are serious about this model, he said, when you go out for um, applications, he says, I would expect at least 10,000. And I just looked at him and I just thought, <laughs> he's barking mad, that guy. What kind of professor of barking madness or what? Um, but he was absolutely serious. And I said to Travel, I don't think he's got that right. And he said, I think he has. No, uh, yeah. He has. The, the, yeah. He ran, uh, we won't go there. It, it, the guy runs a, a different kind of university. It's the building and it's the model yes. of what it delivers that's the uniqueness. It's not limited by that building. It's the model of what it delivers that I think is the exciting it's a bit like pioneering. The TARDIS. <laughs> TARDIS, that's a good thing. It's a TARDIS, isn't it? I just wanted to say, because we're delivering that, it's got like a pioneer. Yeah, pioneer, yeah. And, uh, it, it feels very exciting. But completely by accident. Yes. Yeah. Completely yeah. by accident. <laughs> and, and on occasions, a very unwilling <laughs> pioneer. But that's where it is. Any final questions? We should need to finish. So uh, we'll just do a quick open prayer because time has gone from us. Um, I want to encourage you, if you feel you've got words for Roland, um, write them down, give him a card, that he'd, you know, take them with him, you can look at them. We do have this uh, time on the 8th where we're going to say goodbye, but it's a Sunday, there's a lot to do. This, mm. I don't quite know the plans there, but it, it, won't, it won't be half an hour for sure. It'll be much no, shorter than that because there's loads to do. So, just to say um, goodbye. Just to say goodbye and sent. Not went, as they say. We're going to send them somewhere. Yeah. Um, is that okay? Can we finish? Do anyone want to lead prayer as we finish? If not, I will. Just checking. Last chance. Okay. Father God, thank you for the time we've had together. Um, thank you for the expression that's come out from Roland of what's going on. It is quite a story. We just, uh, I pray for everyone here, Lord, that we might 
uh, see and understand a bit more of what's going on in this unique pioneering thing. Uh, and I pray for my deep brother Roland, partner in crime on so many things abroad, that you equip him, you enable him, and you inspire him. I'm thinking of that verse, be bold, Joshua, you know, mm-hmm. be bold. Don't depart from the word of the Lord. Be bold. Amen. Thank Amen. you very much. Everyone. Thank you for coming. And if you report this event to anyone, please don't mention my phone run out of juice. That's it's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's all captured on the video. Yeah. I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be on top of these things. Thank you very much for coming. Pete, thanks very much, mate. Thank you, Pete.